Hello, I'm Jeannie Wadby and for my Time Tunnelers video today I've come to the London Museum of Steam and Water. I was thinking about how we've now all been through a global pandemic and unfortunately we all know what that's like and how at the beginning we didn't really know exactly how it was spread and that got me thinking to about the cholera epidemic in London in the mid 19th century and how people thought it was spread through bad air or what they called miasma and I always used to think that they were a bit more ignorant than us because they didn't know it was spread through water um, but then when we went through the pandemic we didn't really know that it was spread by air and breathing other people's infected drops the book I've been writing is set around London in 1848 and um, one of the things I researched was the 1848 London cholera epidemic that lasted till 1849, killing thousands um, and that throughout the 19th century there were cholera epidemics through England, Scotland and Wales. Um, so it's easy to see how terrified everybody must have been um, especially because they didn't know what was causing it and they, it's, it's easy to understand why they thought it was the stink from the river um, because the smell was terrible and actually they were right in thinking that the problem was the river but not because of the smell. Um, the actual water of the River Thames was contaminated by cholera infested sewage and that was what was making people sick. But back then, they didn't know that diseases are caused by germs. Um, so in 1848, when the, the cholera epidemic in London began, it started here in Lower Fall Street. And this area of Lambeth was a, a very rapidly growing area um, of great poverty and houses that were thrown up very quickly, very badly, and there were no water pumps for people, so they had to come down here to the White Hart steps and dip a bucket in the Thames, and that's what they drank. And that's how they got cholera, because there was so much sewage in the river. But there was somebody who started to work out that maybe this horrible disease was waterborne, and he was called John Snow. He was a doctor and he, um, in 1849, he put out a paper suggesting maybe water is carrying this disease. But it wasn't until uh, 1854 that he was able to prove his theory. And up until then, people really um, disbelieved him and they, they uh, even mocked him, including a lot of officials and what he did was he followed the, um, an outbreak of cholera until he got back to the first person to have it. And he discovered that she used to go quite a long distance to fetch her water from the Broad Street pump because she liked the taste. Unfortunately, the baby who had died of cholera, um, the family had put the nappies, uh, they'd buried them and they, the, the it had got into the water of the pump and it gave her cholera. Um, so after Jon Snow found this out, people then understood how cholera and other diseases like typhoid could spread through water. Meanwhile, Londoners kept on drinking the Thames water and it got so filthy and smelly um, that in 1838 they couldn't use the pumps uh, at Paddington and Chelsea because the water was just too dirty. So they built a new one out in Brentford near Kew Bridge. Um, this was called the Kew Bridge Waterworks. And that's where the Water and Steam Museum is now. And the water there was lovely and clean because it was still countryside. Um, so at first they pumped it straight into London as it was uh, and they used a big big steam pump which fills the whole of the main building. Um, 
but then they decided they should clean it up first so they built uh, filter beds and reservoirs and cleaned the river water before pumping it so actually there still is a pump there but nowadays it's underground and of course run by electricity so today's writing challenge clean water is a necessity of life and we're mostly made of water and our earth is called the blue planet because from space it's so covered with water that it looks blue. So I want to think about poets when they really love something, a thing, a place, a person or an idea. Um, poets used to write an ode to that thing and they would direct the poem to the thing they loved and that would be an ode. So could you write an ode to water? And first of all, make a list of the things that you love best about water. When you think about water, what do you love about it? Um, and each thing on your list can then become one line in your poem. So just to get you started, I'll show you, I'll tell you my list. Um, so it's putting my hands through blue swimming pool water, raindrops on cobwebs, wet pavements, ice cold tap water in winter.